Good morning YouTube, Brian Van Dyne. For those of you who don't know me and welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to discuss uh, the two types of rates usually that you will encounter when you're running a dump truck business. And one of them is when you get paid hourly versus when you get paid tonnage. Okay, so let me just break it down a little bit for you. Now, just keep in mind, everything is gonna be based on the fact that I'm in Washington, so everything that I tell you is gonna be from a Washington state perspective, okay? Um, so when you get paid by the hour, here's a couple ways uh, that you can go about it, right? Usually, uh, you'll set your base hourly rate, right? For example, and these are uh, rates, I'm gonna give you the rates for basically 2020, and then I'm gonna give you the current rates of 2022, <coughs> kinda of both sides of the spectrum, that way you can kind of understand where things have gone and inflated and you know done all this crazy stuff because in the current economy you know you got to stay up to date with these things because they change and if you don't you'll get left behind and you'll be losing a lot of money okay so first thing you want to do is if you're doing hourly you set your base rate in 2020 a regular solo truck was making anywhere from, you know, on the very bottom low end was making 110. Thank you. Roger. 110 to 130 back in 2020. And all the way from basically 2018 when I started my business to 2020, solo dump truck rate was 110 to 130 right and if you got if you did get a prevailing wage you're up to 160 <clears throat> but I'm not going to talk about p-dub stuff because I don't really like doing p-dub too much paperwork crap involved and it's annoying as hell and I'll just tell you the rates I'm not going to get into p-dub Okay, so solo dump truck, 110 to 130. If it was 110, usually it was something like, hey, you're paying me cash at the end of the day or you're writing me a check at the end of the day type deal because you're charging me so little. Like you're paying me so little, you gotta give me a reason you're paying me so little, right? You, you're paying me now if you're paying me that price, right? But typically speaking, it was 115 to 120 right in there. If you were doing paving, 130. If you were driving a truck or trailer, side dump, end dump, truck and pup, super dump, whatever, it was right around 145. And then I think the uh, prevailing wage rate for that I couldn't really tell you and be accurate because I didn't have one at that time. But if I had to guess, I would have said it would have probably been around for prevailing wage, probably around 175-ish. I'm guessing, I'm guessing on this. Okay. so. Now, today's rates here in 2022 in Washington, for a solo dump truck, today's rates range from a minimum of 130 to probably 150. The most common I've seen is right around 145 right now for a solo dump truck. <clears throat> and truck and trailer is basically 
in 2020 or no 2022 is like 160 plus fuel surcharge I've seen all the way up to 175 plus fuel surcharge okay for truck and trailer transfer side dump super dump blah 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 you get the picture okay now uh, one of the other things is when you're charging by the hour you don't want to pick a job that's three hours away and then you only work for them for a half an hour or one hour and then their machine breaks and then they kick you off the job and say hey man we gotta sign you out the machine's not working peace thanks for coming out thanks for giving the shot your loss not ours no not happening Right? So what you do is usually charge a minimum hours to work on the job site, right? Because in Washington, you don't get paid going to the job site from your house or wherever you park your truck. And you don't get paid from when you clock out back to your place. That's all on you. So you're traveling, you know, in Washington from anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours to the job from 30 minutes to two hours from the job back home that's all free that's on you right so usually typically we charge a minimum to make up for that time that we're working that we're not getting paid right a lot of guys will just do a four hour minimum honestly that ain't enough for me you know I when I first started my business I was a six hour minimum guy. I tried to get a six hour minimum. Um, you know, and that's basically where I'm still at. Six hours, eight hours, eight hours in the summer, six hours in the winter. And that basically covers my drive time. If I have to drive all the way up to Seattle, that's two hour drive, driving up to Seattle and then to work half an hour and then get sent home, that's two hours. I'm making at least six hours because that's four hours of free drive time that they don't get any work done. But guess what? I'm working the whole time. I'm burning up fuel. I'm burning up tires, burning up brakes, blah, blah, blah. You get the picture. So I charge the six hour minimum. A lot of guys did the four. That's up to them. I ain't doing no four-hour minimum. I'm going to do six-hour minimum every time. If you don't like it, don't call me. <clears throat> and in the dump truck world, you know, that's kind of the attitude you got to have. Because if you don't have that attitude, they're going to push you around and they're going to keep pushing you down on your rates. I guarantee it. Hey, dude, you've had your turn still on for like two miles. Are you going to get over or what? Lane ends in like 200 feet. Okay, so now let's talk about getting paid by the ton because that's the second way you can get work in Washington. Paid by the ton or by the yard, whichever way you want to see it. Yard, by the ton, same thing basically. So back in 2020, 2018 to 2020, you know, before economy went upside down and just started doing crazy stuff and the fuel prices went through the roof. <clears throat> oh yeah, I should mention that there's a fuel surcharge now. 2022, if you don't have a fuel surcharge, you're getting raped. That's just the way it is. So you better have a fuel surcharge. And it's a scale, basically. And I'll just, rough estimate, I haven't looked at the scale lately, but I know around five bucks a gallon is around 15% fuel surcharge. So that's just, that's kind of where we're at with the fuel surcharge. I don't really know I haven't looked at the chart in a long time because I don't look at that stuff. Because, for one, I don't have enough brain power to compute all that stuff all the time. Hey, dude, are you going to move or what? 
Get off your phone, you idiot. I'm trying to drive here. Okay, when you get paid by the ton, theoretically, you should be making more per hour if things are going good. Like, typically speaking, when you're getting paid by the ton, you're taking on a bigger risk because if traffic's crappy, you're taking the loss, not whoever's paying you. So usually, it pays a little more. So let's just say, I'm just gonna throw out some numbers here. You guys probably aren't gonna understand half the numbers because you're probably not from Washington. And number two, there's only a couple companies in Washington that'll pay you by the ton. And you're probably not working for any of them. <laughs> so let me just throw out some numbers though. Like, okay, if you're working for the San Corey I'm working for, which is probably pretty slim, but if you are, like an average load was probably paying around seven to eight dollars a ton, somewhere in there right now if you're if you're driving a solo dump truck you ain't making no money you're not going to make nothing you're not going to work for the rock quarry when you're getting paid that because you can't haul enough to make it worth it like you'd be you'd be making like 600 bucks in a day which ain't even going to pay you know half of that's going to fuel and the other half's going to the truck and maintenance so you made jack right if you ain't hauling 20 tons or more, you're not doing it because it just doesn't pencil out, right? They don't pay you more because you're a small truck and you can get into smaller spaces. They don't play that game. They say, we want weight hauled. We're paying you based on the weight or the volume of the material. Like if it's topsoil, it's yards. Okay, so <clears throat> eight dollars a ton 25 tons eight times 25 that's what one load pays you if you get stuck in traffic or behind the accident well you lost money if you calculate it out per hour a lot of times though traffic is pretty good and most of the time you make just a little bit more you know but Honestly, to me, it seems like it's a wash. It's about the same whether you're paid hourly or whether you're paid by the ton. It, it basically is a wash to me. Nowadays, a normal load is paying, you know, right around twelve fifty to fifteen fifty, something like that. I would think probably the normal rate I got one load today that's all in, I'm getting paid 2750 but that's like a rarity right and it's just one load it's for a cash customer up in Seattle so I'm make 700 bucks on this one load it's gonna take four hours to do it though So, pencil that out. It's almost about 200 bucks an hour. <clears throat> it's probably a little more than that because traffic's pretty good. I was able to get loaded pretty quick in the in the pit. You know, there was a long, there was a parade of trucks in the pit, but I was able to get out. That's the other thing you got to take into account. You got to factor in all the things that are going to delay you when you're getting paid by the paid by the ton and the other thing is it's not really beneficial to speak out against the person that's paying you when they you know if things are getting held up you know you just keep your mouth shut and just do it you know eat it sometimes that's what you got to do because there are some days when you're making the big bucks you know it's just a wash it all washes out in the end So, 
those are two types of ways you can get paid in Washington. Kind of broken down a little bit for you. I think one of the best ways to be a very profitable dump truck business is do your own maintenance and repairs. I'm going to say that again. If you want to be profitable in the dump truck world, the best way is to do your own maintenance and repairs or hire somebody to do it for 20 bucks an hour because you're going to go broke real quick. You're not going to have any profits if you're paying a shop $150 an hour to work on your dump truck. Think about it. You're losing 150 bucks an hour because your truck's not working. And then on top of that, you're paying somebody 150 bucks an hour because they're working on your truck. So that's $300 an hour you're losing if somebody's working on your stuff for you. I know you guys don't want to hear it, but that's the way it works. If you really want to have a good high profit margin, you got to do your own stuff. You got to diagnose your own problems. <coughs> You know, you're gonna end up working a lot of times off the clock when you're not getting paid for it. But the saying goes a dollar saved is a dollar earned, right? That's the way the saying goes. I don't make this up, guys. That's the way it is. So, you know, being. Let me just give you a basic example of this. Of how your profit margin can just be stripped from you if you're not doing your own stuff. What the heck? That tailgate's open quite a bit. Um, so when I first started my business, my first dump truck, I bought some tires off the internet I bought eight drive tires for 2,400 bucks. Eight tires. Virgin tires. They were Chinese tires. They were meaty as hell. And they were, those were very good tires. <coughs> $2,400 bucks for eight tires. Now, let's fast forward a little bit, okay? Well, let's rewind again. Let me talk about the, the price of all the tires while I'm t giving you this example. The cost of a drop axle tire to have a shop, mount it, balance it, do all that crap, drop axle tire, 600 bucks out the door per tire. Five hundred to six hundred bucks. That's what it was costing when I first started my business. Fast forward to about a month ago, two months ago maybe. I had a drop axle tire that I had replaced at a tire shop. It cost me one thousand dollars for one drop axle tire. A thousand dollars, guys. We're talking about one tire, a drop axle tire for a thousand dollars. I had eight drive tires replaced, five thousand five hundred dollars. Okay, now let's rewind that again. When I started my business, eight tires, twenty four hundred bucks. Drop axle tire was 600 bucks a piece. Now it's a thousand bucks a piece. <clears throat> now let me give you the price if I just bought it and did it myself. All right, so the eight eight drive tires to pay to have somebody replace them was 5,500. If I did it myself, it would have cost me $3,500. I would have saved $2,000 
if I replaced all the tires myself. The drop axle tire. I went to a local shop. He bought the tires. I bought them from him. $250 a tire. I put them on myself. I bought six of them at once. I brought them all home. I changed one tire. It cost me 250 bucks versus 600 bucks versus a thousand bucks nowadays for one drop axle tire. Steer tires, four and a quarter floats. Right now, you buy a steer tire and from a tire shop and put it on, it's gonna cost you around 1200 to 1500 bucks for one tire. And you ain't buying one, you gotta replace them both at the same time. So there goes 2000 to 2400 bucks. You buy them yourself, 600 bucks a piece. That's it. You save a thousand bucks. So when they say a dollar saved is a dollar earned, you keep more money in your pocket. Yes, you are still working off the clock. You're still working, it's off the clock, you're not getting paid for it, but you are getting paid for it in savings. <clears throat> you keep more of your money instead of giving it to somebody else. Now there is a convenience thing, right? You have to weigh, like if you're on a haul, and you blow a tire, you're not gonna drive two hours back home to change the tire and then drive two hours back, you know, and then your day's gone and you waste all that fuel. You're gonna waste more money than if you just went to the tire shop. But a lot of things are preventative, right? You can watch your tire depth when they get down low, change them all, you know? So, you know, it just you just gotta pay attention to things and, you know, do a little math in your head and you'll figure out which way is the most beneficial. You don't gotta be a rocket scientist. I'm not no rocket scientist, I'm a redneck. If I can do it, you can do it. Trust me guys, I'm not that smart. A lot of you guys think what I do is rocket science, but it's not. It's just simple math. One plus one is two. Two minus two is zero. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed the content. If I helped you out, if I explained something to you, give it a thumbs up. Share it on your social media side of preference. Share it with your buddies. And uh, if I didn't help you, well, maybe go check out another video or never come back to the channel. It don't matter to me. Catch you guys later.